Hey, this is Brian, Cajun Cardboard, coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. Super excited to bring you a little bit of a new type of element to my channel today. I've been working on this. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'm not super tech savvy, but I finally got my young, super intelligent uh, IT staff, my Cajun IT minions to put together something called StreamYard. So I'm now able to bring on guests. I'm able to bring in other minds to get a different perspective, to talk about things. Um, this is kind of why I started a YouTube channel in the first place, so I could share my thoughts with others. But now I can solicit the thoughts of others and opinions of others as well. And uh, two minds are always better than one. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to call these episodes, but I'm going to have a try to have a little regular Sunday episode with a good friend of mine in the hobby who I'm about to introduce and bring on the show. His name is Josh Adams. He is uh, Midwest Vintage Cards on Instagram. Um, I'm still learning the software, so I think I'm going to bring Josh in right now, and we'll introduce Josh, and we'll let you uh, get to know him and get to know a little bit more about him and how we met, and uh, let's see if we can get him in here. Hey, Josh, you there? I, I am not the intelligent uh, tech savvy guy, just so. <laughs> well, good. Maybe our two half brains can make up one intelligent uh, young person brain who understands this stuff. I think uh, so. Talk to me. What's going on on this Sunday evening? You know, just finishing up watching the games today, uh, looking at auctions, getting outbid as usual, and hoping something sneaks through the uh, finish line here. I can get a couple yeah. cards. So you mentioned, I forgot, um, again, I'm on the sidelines right now. I'm consolidating. I'm doing a lot of selling. I'm kind of uh, trying to regroup and kind of put some funds together for national. And I am think I'm going to end up going to, uh, to the Dallas show in May. So I have not been bidding or buying much lately, which is unlike me, uh, but it's probably good to take a breath. You had reminded me tonight, uh, PWCC and Golden are ended, right? PWCC Weekly, I think number 15. I think yep. that's right. Yep. And then uh, the big Golden one. Yeah, there's a bunch of Jordan and Kobe stuff in, uh, well, mostly Kobe in, uh, gold, in Golden I'm looking at. Hopefully okay. get a couple. Hold, hold it. Hold that thought. We're going back to Golden. We're going to go back to PWCC. Okay. First, I want everybody to know who you are, where you came from, sure, sure. what your story is, what's going on. So tell me, uh, first, I guess just start, tell, how old are you? I'm 44, turned 44 okay. in January. Uh, I've been collecting since I was eight, you know, buying packs of tops baseball uh, since I was a little kid. And then, you know, kept doing it. And then as I got older and made more money, I started buying other stuff, you know, like in the 90s, like any other teenager in the 90s. Um, bought basketball, baseball, uh, hockey. I was a big, a big hockey fan. So I buy a lot of hockey um, in the 90s, in the 80s. And then that makes uh, one of us. <laughs> and then basketball in the uh, basketball in the '90s, like everyone else in Chicago, I was a Michael Jordan fan. So you know, you're cracking skybox, Fleer, upper deck, and every card show you could find, looking for looking for cards. Uh, I know, like in '93, I was 15, so that was when uh, Topps Finest came out with their baseball refractor set, yeah, which was the first refractor set. And I was uh, remember going to shows looking for those cards. You can never find refractors ever and then yeah. turns out there's like 229 or something for, for, for each of each refractor so they're impossible yeah. yeah did you you're 44 you started when you were eight so that yeah. sort of sounds exactly like me i'm 47 but i also started probably when i was around six by going to flea markets with my cousin mm -hmm. i've talked about another podcast did you take breaks or did you are you going strong 36 straight from eight to 44? Or did you take breaks for chicks in college and law school and all that other stuff? I took I took a break in law school, just couldn't have any money. So yeah, I think it, it's hard. Like there was a there was a card shop in town that I used to go to all the time. I knew the owner, we used to hang out a lot, and I would, you know, flip stuff, be able to buy things for my collection. But I think you know, I was in law school in 2001 through 2004 and 03 exquisite came out. I think it was like 500 bucks a box. I could, I mean, that was might as well have been a million dollars back then. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. couldn't do well, it. Well, that's what the government loans are for, right? I mean, how, many, how much money could you borrow when you were in law school? So I'm, I'm three years ahead of you. So I was in law school in 98 to 2000. And I think the max we could borrow then from the federal government was like 14.5. Did you bar, Did you max out? I maxed out. I don't ever remember there being a limit. I remember them yeah. saying, all right, how much do you need? Just like, let us know. Here you go. Like, yeah. I wish someone would do that for me today. But yeah, so... Uh, I used that money for school and I worked and, you know, flipped cards when I could to, uh, to buy cards for my collection, but it was, it was pretty lean from like Oh one to Oh five. So you were lean, but you were still dabbling in cards. I was yeah. lean and I could not touch them at all. So, uh, let's see from, uh, 1990 until 1999, I didn't collect. 
which I know you're best looking at me. You're like, oh, damn, you missed, right? Yeah. You missed on the greatest era of basketball cards in the Ever. history of this hobby, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a bummer. So, so, but you know, the good thing is now you could find those cards with, I mean, some, most of them, right? With yeah. some decent legwork. And you know, a lot of people in the hobby and you're pretty good at uncovering stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not the sharpest cat out there, but I got a lot of friends who are. So, when you got a lot of eyes looking for certain cards, you can always go pick them up, right? Right. Yeah. You, you found a PMG. Uh, or That's it. I, I found a PMG for you a couple weeks ago. You did, you did, and that PMG got shipped to my uh, shipped to my vault, and then uh, and now it's off to PSA for grading. But that's another episode. We're going to talk about all that stuff on another episode. <laughs> so, so tell me this. So, obviously, you know, we have real similar. It sounds like we have similar origin stories. Yeah. Started collecting about the same age. I also started uh, almost one hundred percent exclusively baseball. Okay. I touched a little bit of nineteen eighties tops, but you would have been like three years old, so you probably yeah. weren't. You weren't busting those or six or four years old, something like that. Yeah. So I was actually open in 1980s packs. And of course, immediately I'm tearing them into three pieces, right? So I just went from one right. card to three. You know, I thought I was the greatest. Uh, <laughs> and I thought it was cool to have a little tiny cards, right? If only we right. knew what we uh, knew now, you know, back then what we know now. So, um, but then I went, I went straight baseball just like you. So from, you know, 1980, I remember chasing that damn Ricky Henderson. He was my first PC. So even at age, let's see, I would have been six years old. Ricky Henderson, there was something about him and his stolen base record. When he stole 130, it was like, to me, it was like mind blowing. So it was like Ricky oh, yeah. Henderson or bust. And then he started hitting home runs and he was my hero. So he was my pretty much my sports hero growing up in the 90s, which is really weird because I'm a basketball lifer. Mm -hmm. uh, who was your guy? Who was the very first guy you remember? Just I'm going to PC this dude. Uh, honestly, Frank Thomas, when I was like 16. Yeah. I, uh, that was the one that my favorite baseball player. You know, like the big hurt was huge, hit tons of home runs. It's a big dude. So I've been collecting him since 90 when he came out. Remember, 90 Leaf was a big set. I was 12 huge. in 1990. So it's the um, the white is that the, the white yeah. leaf? Yeah, okay. Yeah, the white border. Um, yeah. I have one here somewhere. And uh, that was like my favorite card. I remember yeah. John Olrude that year was flirting with 400. Yeah. So everyone was chasing that card. But I was, and that was series one, I think. And then Frank was in series two. So I remember you know, chasing that card. And that was the first card I really chased. Yeah. So yeah, that was, in, and you were in Chicago too, right? Right. So you right. had, you had the big hurt going at the same time as Jordan at the same time as nobody worth a damn in football. Right. <laughs> Chicago, right. 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 Walter retired. And that's right. They have been, they've been bad ever since. Yeah. I'm <laughs> trying to think you're right. They've been absolutely, they haven't had any mega super collectible superstar, right? Nope. Maybe Justin Fields if he gets a wide receiver, but apparently they draft. Hey, let's him. relax. Relax with that. I know you're from <laughs> Chicago. You got to be kidding me. Let's just calm down for a second here. Let's calm down. You can you can start picking skill position players, but when you start talking about Chicago quarterbacks, I know enough about football to know now you're being a homer. Now you're they've being overly optimistic. Good, they've had one good quarterback, and his name was Sid, and it's still Sid Luckman. Yeah, that was there like you go. In the forties. That's funny. Um. All right, so look, I'm going to see – let's see if this works, right? I said I'm not the sharpest cat here, so I'm going to try to switch us over. Okay, so look. Look what I got. Isn't that fancy? Ah. I got your uh, I got your IG page pulled up. Um, anybody who's watching who's uh, who's not familiar with Josh, go check out his Instagram page. Just click on the follow button. I guess I should really preface that. If you're watching my channel and you're watching us talk about cards, then clearly you care about the hobby, especially if you're still watching after 10 minutes of us just BSing back and forth. If you're not on Instagram – I can't stress enough how much Instagram can, um, um, I guess, accentuate and uh, improve the hobby experience. Josh, am I wrong? I mean, when I got on Instagram, it took collecting to a whole nother level, not just being able to to like share beautiful high def pictures with everybody. That's fun, right? Flexing your cards and what you picked up and the moves you're making is fun. But also it, it just opened me up to a whole world of collectors that one made me feel extremely irrelevant because of the, right. uh, the disproportionate size of some of yeah. these collectors in their collections. Yeah. yeah. But it, it just, it kind of, it kind of united me with the world. I've got, I've got friends in Austria. I've got friends in Germany. I've got friends in, um, you know, in South America. I mean, we've got a mutual friend in South America who collects yeah. Jordan. We've got friends in Australia who collect Jordan. Um, it, it's just yeah. incredible. Has, has Instagram changed your, you know, perception of the hobby and the way you do it? It has been so great. Um, I wish I got on earlier. I think I got on in 2018, maybe, or 19, but I wish I did it 
five years earlier, if it was around yeah. five years before. But like I never did it because I thought it was for honestly, I thought it was for like younger kids and like I had no need for it. But there's a huge sports collectors community on there that's been I met so many great people from it and my collections like exploded because of it. Stuff I could never find. Yeah. Uh I found it because of Instagram. Uh my the, if you scroll down a little, there's a Jordan Diamond Dimensions down there. That's I saw been, it. Like, yeah, that's like my chip. That's the card I've been looking for my entire life. Not my yeah. entire life, like past 20 some years. This and, one is, uh, this is nuts lately, right? Like this card, the Ultra Stars Gold. I mean, those two cards are going nuts lately. I'm gonna, we're going to nerd out on Jordan stuff all the time, right? All yeah. the time on Sundays, just here yeah. and there. It's always going to, it all routes come back to Jordan. That's just the way it is when I start talking, right? Everything comes back to Jordan. But this Diamond Dimensions card lately, and look, it sounds like it's not just the Jordan. But I've seen post after post after post from whale collectors almost like just chasing all the Hall of Famers, right? Their hand serial numbered to 100. Is that right? It is. I'm, I'm actually doing the set. I'm chasing the set. I don't know if I should, you know, I don't care. If I'm chasing the set. I've got about 20. I need about 12 more cards and I'm done. I just don't tell them. anybody which ones you need. Yeah, you'll make, I'll need to edit it out or you're going to pay triple for them now. Oh, I know. But I got this from a dentist. So you know how that goes. Yeah, is it yeah. the same dentist that charges exorbitant prices that we're friends with in yes, a, in a actually, Jordan group chat? Yeah, yeah, I think it would have been cheaper to have him, to have him remove a molar, and I would have uh, been okay. So, awesome. yeah, no, but, yeah, I mean, I met him through Instagram. Uh, he's, a, I mean, yeah, you know, I found this card at Instagram. Guy, oh, A guy was getting rid of some of them. Antoine Walker, a Chicago kid, too. He's from Chicago. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, it's my favorite set, uh, basketball set of all time. Everyone, you know, it, it's I like the die cut cards. I've always liked die cut cards, and yeah. the hand numbering is is fantastic. You know I mean, what's weird, Josh? And tell me if you think I'm wrong, but die cut cards are highly sought after from the '90s. Highly yeah. sought after, Hot Shots, um, um, Cut Above, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Diamond Dimensions. I mean, we can go down a list and name 15 of them. Um, Profile but I feel like now people don't dig them as much in ultra modern. I know you don't touch too much in ultra modern, but right now people are like die cut. They don't they don't dig that stuff. No, are there a lot of die cut issues in like ultra modern stuff? Or no, there's not as many because I think I think young hobbyists don't have the same desire for them that that we do. I don't think they have the same allure that they did in the '90s. In the '90s, it was like drastically different, right? Right. A card with a patch in it was nuts, right? A card with an autograph was unusual. A serial numbered card, not until the mid to late '90s, right? And then yeah. die cut cards, same deal. Yeah. I don't I don't know right. what the first die cut card was. We could probably figure that out, or somebody maybe watching the show could comment or you might know, but back then those were like four anomalies, right? You knew you had something special. Now it's like an autograph in every box. And then the die right. cut stuff, people don't dig that. I just remember select came out with those like shield shaped die cuts, maybe yeah. in 2018 or 19. Yeah. It was 18. People did not like those cards uh, for whatever reason. But, I think uh, they're pretty sharp. Uh, this uh, profiles three and um, diamond dimensions were the first die cut. Upper deck there you deck. go. And these are different. on fire, right? Oh my gosh, these I, are I definitely on fire. I'm doing this set too. I probably should stop saying what I'm doing, but you should stop. A... Yes, you should stop. I've got <laughs> three of them. I'll sell you for triple what they're worth. You got? I I, I didn't know you were a dentist. Um, the, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I always had a thing for die cuts. Like I love this card. I think I think Hot Shots from 04, just a real sharp set. There's a there's a subset that's out of fifty in there yeah. too. I mean, that's just a regular um, insert, but I think they're sharp and it's cool. There's a LeBron in that set too that never pops up. Yeah, yeah, but those are pretty. those are big time. And look, these, I know, I, I, again, you know me, I have, I think maybe three football cards in my, you know, to my name and maybe a couple baseball cards, but I think, mm. don't they have hot hands? Don't they have that insert in football and baseball? There is a football. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a football one, which I'd love to find that too. I can never, I can never find that. Those are tough. Uh, I think uh, one of our good friends, Dr. Michael, collects those as well because I've seen him post a few of those. Yeah, um, he's not a dentist. Yeah, he's what? He's not a dentist. He's, he's not a dentist. He's a real doctor. Right. He's a real doctor. Right. <laughs> just like, <laughs> just like you're a real attorney, and I'm, I'm a transactional attorney, right? So you're an actual real attorney. You actually speak, right, and persuade and make arguments and speak to judges and jurors. I just shuffle papers around, right? I'm more of a businessman who happens to have a law degree. It's probably a lot less stress, though. Oh, I know it is. I know it is. I didn't choose it by accident. Uh, I know um, that of the two of us, you have all your hair. So that's right. That's right. Well, my anxiety comes from my kids, right? That's that's how I that's how I stay in shape. I get the anxiety from from having a big family. Um, so let's talk about this. So we talked a little bit about your origin story. Um, 
tell me, give, give me, give us a perspective, right? Because I'm going to have you on the show. We're going to be talking all the time, right? Uh, let, let everybody who's watching know, give us an idea of your collection. This is primarily a basketball channel, but if you had to divide your collection into uh, baseball, basketball, football, hockey, and then just non-sports, just from the card standpoint, let's not talk about memorabilia yet, just right. cards, divvy up your portfolio of cards. Cards, 50% basketball. Uh, probably, and then 25% baseball. Yeah. And then uh, 25% mixture of football, hockey. Got it. It's always Got changing. It. Like um, on that, on my set there, I on that page, I was doing the uh, 1935 National Chickle set. Uh, it's like the first football collectible set that came yeah. out with Chickle gum. But the Bronco Nagurski in that set is is impossible. It's a, it's hard to find. It's expensive. So I'm like, eh, I'll just scrap it. And uh, I Put all that money back into honestly like Jordans and uh basket 90s basketball. Yeah. To finish that set and then the stuff that I really like, you know, stuff yeah. that I was looking for as a younger kid. Um yeah. and then baseball, it's uh vintage baseball. Uh 48 leaf baseball is my all-time favorite set. I did a story about it on Instagram today, but that's a that was a first post-war chewing gum set. So I, is I that Jackie, that is that the Jackie rookie? That's the Jackie Robinson yeah. rookies in that. Um I Sold that card a long time ago. I don't want to tell you for how much because I. Congrats. No, I want to know exactly how much. Uh, I will start crying. I sold it for, it was a three and I sold it for $1,000. Oh. Um, a while ago. So not like yeah. recently. I don't even think I'm an idiot, but no, yeah. I sold it a while ago. Like, yeah. Probably 2016 or 17. So did right you at least take that thousand bucks and go buy like a Jordan PSA 10 86 Fleer? I bought a Jordan Auto with that card. <laughs> Close. That money. Hey, look, you, you might have done okay then. I remember exactly. I was at the National in 2016. I remember exactly where I sold it. You know, I've still never been to the National. We're going this year, man. You'll. We're but gonna. You know who my tour guide is for the National. I will. I've got my my table set up. I will get you a pass. Uh, I'll meet you in Philly. We'll take the train from Philly to Atlantic City. I'll literally never get there unless you help me. I'm from Louisiana. I don't know how to get there. I have no idea. I, all I know is I'm landing in Philly, and then I'm gonna look around. My, I'm gonna be like those dudes. You ever see the movies where yeah. there's like a, a limousine driver with a sign saying Cajun car? It'll say Cajun cardboard. I'll find you, and then you just take me on the train. I'll wear the Cajun cardboard uh, T-shirt. I'll stick it. No yeah. one else in Philly is going to have one, right? The, well, we don't know that. That's true. Maybe. <laughs> I don't, I, hopefully they will, right? I shouldn't we don't say know that. Hopefully yeah. they will. Sorry. It could yeah. be very confusing. It could be a whole train station full of people wearing this great T-shirt. You don't know that. I've well, still got yeah. time. I mean, you don't think I can sell, you know, 50 billion T-shirts? I think you can. Um, all right, so we know your breakdown of your portfolio based on sports, right? Yeah. So primarily, we're about 50% basketball, 50% yeah. the rest. We're primarily a basketball channel. If you had to break up your basketball collection, how much of it is, is – let's break it up by players. I know you got set collecting going on as well. Yeah. As far as guys that you actually PC, that you truly yeah. PC, Jordan, Jordan, Kobe. Kobe, Kevin Garnett. I do Kevin okay. Garnett because Chicago guy. I saw him play in high school in the, in the state championships. Um, I, yeah. I actually I went downstate. I was I was 16. I went downstate to watch him in the final in the state finals. After the state semifinal, I ran across the the court and I had him sign a uh, a program uh, from the state championship. And uh, that has been lost to time, unfortunately. But yeah. I got in so much trouble, they almost kicked me out of this out of the stadium. So <laughs> so the University of Illinois plays plays basketball and. Yeah. Uh, this guy, he's, I remember he was like the biggest man I've ever seen in my life. And it was yeah. just, uh, it was so cool. So I collected his cards ever since because I'm like, hey, guy's from Chicago. So, um, and then also George Mikan. I have a bunch of George Mikan cards. Uh, so I think the hobby would be shocked to find out there's more than one because all we ever hear about is, is it the 48 Bowman Mikan? Is it 48, right? I yeah. Have a 48 so. Bowman Mikan and a two that I okay. do not keep in my house, but yeah. uh, I, Bought that in 2011, and uh, yeah. I remember exactly where I bought that. Too. I bought that at a uh, at the show in Chicago. There's a Sun Time show in November. I bought that for a thousand bucks. Yeah. Um, is, is that card perfectly square? Like, is it truly an exact square? Because I yeah. sometimes want to see. I mean, it is yeah. a like a postage stamp square, right? Yeah. 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 Mine's severely off centered and creased, yeah. but it's uh, a two is fine with me on that card. I can't, you know, anything else is like astronomical now. Yeah. Uh, then he's got a bunch of regional cards. Okay. So. He's got a, a Bond Bread for Health uh, card, which is they made that uh, the Bond Bread Company made these little inserts on each on the end of a loaf of bread. So when you would um, 
buy the loaf of bread, the, the card at the end. You could get basketball cards. You could get, I believe there were football cards, baseball. There's a Jackie Robinson in that set. And there's like women tennis players. So wow. it's a really – Wilma Rudolph too, who was like a runner. So yeah. it's a really cool set. I once had a friend of mine, we bought an uncut sheet. And it has – it had Mike and I think it had Bob Cousy as well. I could be wrong. but I'll find a picture somewhere. But we sold it, the National, to uh, Bill Simmons. Did you really? Yeah, he uh, Richard Simmons. This guy sweating to the oldies. Richard Simmons. That's Bill crazy. Simmons. Oh, Bill Simmons. I thought you said Richard Simmons. I don't know why. I don't know why my, my mind is on Richard Simmons. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, no, Bill Simmons. He, he uh, him and like some guy from the NBA is like, yeah, can we buy that? Because I guess there was a koozie on there, and uh, they he probably cut the koozie out. He probably cut the koozie out. He probably cut all the Celtics out. I would die. It was such a cool <laughs> uncut. She was like a proof sheet of each right, card. right. So, but but there's a Mike in um, that uh, I had once, and then there's also a uh, Mike in uh, Scott's potato chips did a set in '52 after Minneapolis won the uh, the uh, NBA championship. Yeah, and it's like a one just sold last week in REA, but it was I don't remember where it ended at, but it was at, it was at five grand last time I yeah. checked. But there's a whole set. The Mike in it's a blue with like black pencil writing. The mic is impossible to find. Yeah. So is that a, is that an uncut sheet over your right shoulder? It is. That is an uncut sheet of um. What is that? Oh, that's a uh, action pack football. I got the national nineteen ninety two. They were giving them out. Yeah. And then the one that's hanging up though is uh, an uncut sheet of uh, ninety six tops baseball. That I just uh, a friend gave it to me and it's autographed by, yeah. by uh, Frank Thomas and oh, that's cool. Frank Maddox. So that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I get this vibe, right? My next question was like, what percentage of your collection? Uh, you don't tell me the last year you collect as far as basketball. Like, where did you say, you know what, enough is enough. I'm not touching it. Is it? I know you don't do any ultra modern, but do you yeah. even mess with the Panini era at all? I don't. I don't like Panini cards to be honest. Yeah. I'm like I'm like a leper, not a leper, like an outcast. I don't. Uh, I don't, I'm not really a huge Panini fan. Yeah. Um, I was always a big upper deck fan in Tops. I really liked yep. them, and I was bummed out when, you know, Tops stopped making basketball. Uh, probably 2004 is the latest card I would have that uh, Kobe Hot Hands is the latest card I have, the most I recent. Got you. I got you. So yeah. let me ask you this. So we know that Fanatics is coming in, yeah. right? We, yeah. We're both got, you know, we're, optimistically speaking – we're all excited. We're hearing all the right things. It sounds like Luber's saying all the right things. He's speaking from the perspective of, yes, he's a businessman. I know he's going to try to maximize profits for his, you know, for his shareholders and his board, whatever, and his company. But he's saying all the things that we want him to say. Everything that's come out of his mouth has made us happy, right? As far as limited production, understanding scarcity, understanding, you know, rarity, limiting the number of parallels. He said some really great stuff. Are you going to dive back in? Because I think tops, right? Yeah. Can they print? Tops, didn't we figure that out? Did that happen? I'm not the best on, you know, ultra modern state of affairs of the hobby, big stuff, but I think they got the license, right? They did. I think they just they just released or they just had for sale some Tops Finest Basketball. Someone posted a picture of Isaiah Thomas in a fur coat. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, don't, okay, uh, I didn't tell you this. I should have told you this before we got on air. Don't ever say Isaiah Thomas's name on my channel. Thank you. I can't Thank stand you. Isaiah Thomas. I mean, I hate him. I hate him. He walked <laughs> off, didn't shake the bull's hand after they beat He's him. He's a Chicago kid, though, isn't he? I know. St. Joseph. You're not torn at all. You're not torn. I okay. Him. I hate him. Good. Well, then then it's then it's settled. It's a pact. We'll never speak of Isaiah again. You could talk about the other Isaiah, the, the one for the Celtics that was almost MVP, and now it doesn't have any money. Oh, that's talk about right. That. Yeah, that's the a little tiny story. one. Yeah. We'll yeah. talk about the tiny Isaiah. So anytime you say Isaiah Thomas, I'm going to picture the left-handed kid that played for the Celtics. Same. Fair? Okay, good. Absolutely. That's perfect. Um, yeah, so I think – but did did Fanatics not uh, buy Tops? I don't think they did. I don't what think they, they bought Tops license. Who did they there? buy? They got they got the NBA license. Right. But didn't they – I don't. I thought they did. I don't know. I don't pay and attention so, to stuff like that. I guess the top stuff now is not is unlicensed, so it's not. They don't have the NBA. No, no. Now. I mean, I mean, didn't they buy them? So where when they when the license does kick in for basketball, can't right. they remake Tops Chrome and Tops Finest? Yes, they could. Okay, that's what I thought. So what happens? What happens in two thousand twenty five when Fanatics releases Tops Chrome? I mean, by then I would buy it. Because it would have the Chicago Bulls championship uh, cards in there. So yeah. I would be uh, happy to buy that. The, the AO MVP and the Pat Williams. Uh, 
Finals I'm MVP to, card would be. I'm about to turn this off. If you bring up Ayo Dusumu, he's right after Isaiah Thomas. I've heard so much of your BS on the group chat about that. We got to stop this. We got to stop this Ayo. Ayo love. Ayo had a had an okay. Listen, the Bulls have been bad for so long. I'm just so yeah. happy they even made the playoffs. And yeah. and a gentleman sweep is fine with me. You know, fair enough. I didn't fair lose enough. one game. Well, they did a great job. They did a great job earning that gentleman's sweep. They really did. Put up a great yeah. fight. Bucks and look, look, Levine, it sounds like Levine's got an issue where, like, that was a lingering deal, right? And it yeah. finally it just built to a crescendo, and it was like, all right, that's it. And so yeah. I think they saw the writing on the wall, so they killed it. And look, the Bucks are the real deal, man. And we're about to talk about that. Let's talk about let's talk about the games. Let's talk about the games. I, I said we would. Two games today. It's Sunday, May 1st. Um, my bucks, I, again, anybody who watches my channel knows I am not objective. Uh, but I am also, um, I knew the bucks were coming. I knew it was going to happen. Hang on. I think I got an ad on on my, how do I turn that off? Hang on. Josh. Very good. Let I me mean, just click box score. How about that? Nope. Oh, there we go. The ads off. Um, anybody who knows me knows I'm a Bucks homer, right? And so I was calling this. I thought it was going to be an issue for the Celtics, given that they don't have a true point guard, right? Like somebody who really gets into the paint, creates, and does things. The Bucks have Drew Holiday. Um, you know, the Bulls, it was an issue, right? Lonzo was out. It's an issue. I think oh. you've got to have a true point guard. I, mean, I think you have to. Um, somebody who can get in the paint and just make the game easier for everybody else and just keep control of the game. Um, and so I knew it was going to be an issue with the Celtics. Marcus Smart, it looked like I thought he had separated his shoulder. I thought it was done for. And if he's out, they're totally finished. But uh, uh-huh. but it, it proved to be true today. I mean, the Bucks. no offense, but it, the, the Celtics looked like the Bulls. They got bullied. Um, oh, they did. That, oh. That's what I saw, you know. Um, so for the Bucks, the Bucks went into, uh, went into Boston, um, you know, on their floor. Giannis was, I mean, I know he had 24, 13, and 12, but he really wasn't good. I mean, he was nine for 25. He didn't shoot it well. He was, he didn't make a three. Um, you know, he didn't, uh, he missed free throws. So um, it just wasn't your typical Giannis performance, even though he didn't end up with a triple double. He wasn't super efficient and they still rolled relatively comfortably. They won by 12. Um, you know, they won three out of four quarters. Uh, they didn't look phased at all, not having Middleton. No, not at all. Not, they looked, they looked so good, uh, like unbeatable. They, uh, anytime you can go into, you know, when when on uh, the opponent's court in the first game is great. They stole home court advantage off the bat. It's amazing now. Now it's best out of five. They win. Uh, they win three more. That's it. So other game, other game. Warriors Grizzlies. Did you think that the Grizzlies had a chance? Did, do you know anybody that thought that the Grizzlies would win the series? That or they still could. I'm not saying no. they can't, but do you know anybody who thinks the Grizzlies can win this series? I don't think so. Just just people that have a lot of John Moran cards. That's probably yeah. it. Yeah, that's probably uh, that's probably wishful thinking. My we have a mutual friend. friend who definitely does not like John ja Morant, and I'm not a huge John. Ja, I'm not a huge John ja Morant collector, but I don't go out of my way to disparage him. Uh, I'll leave it that way. I'll be as polite as I can. I, I just don't think, you know, we saw it with the Bucks. I mean, how many years in a row did they lose before they finally broke through? Right. When Jordan was trying to get through, how many years did he lose to the Pistons before he broke through? You almost have to get there and fail before right. you can break through. Uh, even the Raptors, man. I mean, the Raptors right. lost 50 million, you know, playoff series in a row. And then, of course, Kawhi rolls into town and changes things. But but all those other guys, those are really good players. You know, uh, Kyle Lowry and Marcus Sullivan, all those guys, they lost, 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 lost. And then finally – they broke through. It's almost like you have to go through it, right? And that's right. why the Suns worry me. That's why the Warriors worry me. You know, as a, from the perspective of a Bucks fan, that's why the yeah. Heat worry me. Um, those guys have all been there and done that. Um, and you could say the same about the Celtics. Uh, they've been there and they've kind of been knocking on the door. They've gotten sure. to the Eastern Conference Finals and they've lost. And, and that that crew has. I just don't think the Celtics have that point guard. Um, it, it also just worries me. They don't have an offensive post presence. Uh, they don't have a guy that you can kind of dump it into. And the Bucks have multiple guys. They really yeah. do. I um, mean, you saw what happened with Giannis in the first round. He just, no one can, they, they couldn't stop him. And you're just going to, he'll put up as many points as he wants. Yeah. The last game, especially against the Bulls is where I think it clicked. It's like, if you don't have yeah. some rim protection, it's lights out. It's lights right. out. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, So the Warriors did sneak past the Grizzlies. Uh, Jordan Poole had another monster game um, coming off the bench. I think he had 31, 8, and 9, it looks like, on our screen. Let me – I don't know have our screen. Hold on. Our friend who who doesn't like John Morant had a good post today about Jordan Poole. Uh, However Poole goes is how the – 
how the Warriors will go. And I'm with him. I'm with him because Poole was an animal in, uh, I think, game games one and two in the first round, and they cruised. And then it was a dogfight for the next three games against the Nuggets, missing their, I think most people would say, missing their second and third best player. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't, I'm not buying the Warriors doing coming out of the West. I'm just not. I don't think they have the same reason. Um, you know, I worry about the Celtics. They don't have a point guard. I worry about the Warriors. They don't have a rim protector on defense or a post no. presence on offense. They have neither. They don't, I mean, Kevon Looney. What is Kevon Looney? Um, I mean, if you're playing against the Heat, Kevon Looney's not going to be able to handle Adebayo. If you're playing against the Sixers and it's a healthy Embiid and his face works, you're not going <laughs> to. He's not going to be able to handle Embiid. If it's the Bucks that come out, uh, there's no chance in hell they're going to keep the Bucks from being at the. They're going to be at the rim ad nauseum over and over and over, pounding it just like they did against the. Uh, just like they did against the Bulls. The Warriors are, I think, have the most glaring hole. In mm. interior, like offense and defense of any team in the league, and I don't think an incomplete team can do it. I just don't think they can. A three pointers only get you so much, you know. And they got to be on every game, man. They got to yeah. be on every game, and a lot of that it's smoke and mirrors because it really depends on your opponent. I mean, you saw we saw the Celtics. Look, everybody, the media was all over their nuts. You pardon my language, but the media was all over them, right? They love the mm -hmm. Celtics. The Celtics are – suddenly the Celtics are favored over the Bucks. The Celtics are favorites to come out of the East. That's yeah. preposterous. They played one of the softest teams in the NBA and cruised mm -hmm. through them. Again, I didn't expect them to win 4-0, but I certainly didn't think – you know, the Nets have a lot of glaring deficiencies as well, and I didn't expect Kyrie and KD to roll over. But, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, again, I don't want to piss anybody off, but I, I just don't. <laughs> I don't think the Celtics are coming out of the East. And I think the media and all the talking heads on, you know, Fox and ESPN mm -hmm. got a little bit carried away because they rolled sure. through a really soft Nets, a Nets gang, you know? So. I agree. I agree. I mean, all right. Enough, great. enough about basketball. Enough about basketball. <laughs> Let's look at basketball cards, right? Let's talk about some cards. I've got the PWCC auction pulled up right now. I'm going to let you help me navigate through the, uh, the golden auction in a second. And we're not going to take a ton of time. Um, but I've got the, the PWCC auction. Let me let me do this to make the screen bigger. There you go. So um, this is weekly auction number 15. I've got it sorted by highest current bid to lowest. Um, I've got the uh, the top 24 items pulled up. It's only basketball and basketball wax, Josh. Okay. Um, I think it uh, I think it ends what I'm trying to read this up here. Current window seven to seven thirty. Are we in extended bidding? I should probably know this. Uh, not I'm not bidding on anything, so maybe that's why. Oh, yeah, I don't. it says extended bidding is live. So. Oh yeah. Probably. <laughs> so that's what that means. So you're telling me extended bidding is live. So, yes, extended bidding is live. So uh, let's see. Here's what we got. So this is an, an interesting eclectic mix on here. Uh, this is a card, right? This is the first one that jumps out to me. Not as rookie. Right. Um, but recently we've seen this insane surge, right? I do these weekly recaps for all the PWCC weekly auctions on Monday and tomorrow will be no different. I'm going to recap this auction and we'll look at the top 100 sales. We've seen this crazy run lately on 1970s PSA 10 cards. It doesn't even need to be a rookie, Josh. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I mean, like crazy prices. I mean, I'm, we're looking at this is pre BP, right? So we're looking yeah. at 21.5, which is over $25,000 already. Plus four hundred bucks, well, four thousand dollars. It's twenty percent, four thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, over twenty five grand right now. Um, it's got a PWCC A sticker, which is top thirty percent. That's great, and it is razor sharp. I mean, it is absolutely clean as a whistle. It's a beautiful looking card. Um, it's. I mean, it looks more like Pete Maravich is, you know, like the drummer in like a jazz band on Bourbon Street, right. than a, you know, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. But that's not his rookie card. Like, I don't understand how that card could mean so much to somebody that they would prefer that card over the card that's right next to them. And I know everybody's going to say, wow. but it's the pop. It's the pop, Brian. And I'm like, I get it. But, you know, supply is not everything. I mean, you're looking at a guy who, I mean, I think by all accounts, historically, I think most people would already agree that Giannis's historical resume has surpassed Pete Maravich's. Has it not? Okay. I don't know what you're drinking there um, in Louisiana. Well, I'm sorry. I forgot all the titles that Pete won. Remind me, how many MVPs does you're he right. have? No, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm yeah. Actually, remind me, did he ever guard his opponent in an NBA game in history? Oh, he, oh definitely not. No. Pistol Pete, just because he could shoot, that was it. A defense wasn't his thing. You know, I mean, I know it's sacrilege for two white dudes to sit on the screen and, like, disparage a, a white basketball player who was, you know, dominating in the 70s and all that. I get that. 
And I understand his college situation was a little different. And guess what? I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, so I might wake up with like a severed head of a dead horse in my bed tonight uh, talking bad about Pete Maravich. But, yeah. I mean, if you if you had to choose right now, if somebody said, hey, Josh, which Midwest Josh, which car do you want? Pick one. And you can pick one for 10 years from now. You had to and hold it for probably, 10 years. Probably Giannis, just because you're right, because he's got a championship. That is his rookie, right? It's his true rookie. Is that his true rookie? It's his true rookie. It's his yeah. silver. Um, you know, we've got it. Let's pull it up. Let's say, I know, I know the pizza pop five, right? But the Giannis over here, let's pull it up. Yeah. Come on. Here we go. Oh, yeah. card ladder. Yep. We use card ladder pro here. So we've got Giannis pulled up. That is a pop 75 card, Josh. Uh, that card has sold for, let's go back and look at the last two years. Cars wow. got as high as 42,000, 40, almost 43,000. Sold for 40,000 two months ago. And then, wow. God, that's nuts, huh? Sold for 40,000 two months ago, and it's at 25,000 last sale. And tonight, yeah. has the pop increased at all since that one, since that last sale? Or no, man, that pop is look, it was 75, and then I don't know what this is all about. There's right. sure probably a story behind this. The pop went down to 74 for a few days, and then it went back to 75. That's one of those deals, like, that's another thing we could talk about. That's a weird deal to me. Like, sometimes right. PSA will somehow get a card that they think was improperly or overgraded, right? And they'll crack it out and give the person the money or something, and then they'll regrade it a PSA 9. Yeah, have you heard about that? Yeah, that's yeah, I. That looks like what that was, right? Because the pop yeah. went down. I've heard about that. It happened with the Jordan 86 Fleer PSA 10. It went the pop yeah. went like 316 up to 319, and then it went back down to 318. So I don't know. I don't That's another again. Card. There's like a million of those. What's that? There's a million of those 86 Fleer Jordans. You know, not PSA 10s. Oh, give us some time. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you dare. Uh, what else do we have on here? So we got our gold up here. What do you think about gold? Are you, are you one of these uh, gold diggers? Let's call them gold diggers, right? Everybody in the hobby is all over the, the gold number to 10. Nah, I never get into it. Yeah. I never get into it. Is it because there's uh, 700 different golds number to 10? Right, yeah. So <laughs> I never know which one to get. And I, a lot of the modern guys, like, I mean, if there's a gold IO, maybe I'll buy one, right? But that's oh about it. gosh. Maybe someone will just mail you one watching the show. They may feel sorry for you. That's what I'm kind of trying to get you now back into modern. All he can talk about is Ayo Dosumu. Let's just mail him one. <laughs> mail him a gold prism. Uh, well, row two, we got, you know, a LeBron 2003 finest refractor. That's a good looking card. Uh, that's a low pop card. I know it's number to 250. This one I know you're going to be familiar with. You own, Do you own a BAMS? I don't have a BAMS. I have a Kobe, but not a Jordan, which I would I would like to get a Jordan. Um, I don't have a Jordan either. It's awesome. That, I will that tell you not, that. LeBron, that is not best. that is not my high bid. No, my, me no. neither. No, yeah, I'm, I'm if, if it was, it would show on the screen, which is something I probably need to remember before we film these episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to show everybody on earth what my high bid is, and the consigner is going to bid just below it. Right. Uh, I probably got to watch that. This is a big number here, Josh. I'm going to tell you that. Uh, yeah. I've got a BGS nine. I traded one recently um, to our uh, uh, our a dentist friend who robs everybody and uh, uh it was a bgs9 i had two of them i've still got one for sale this is eleven thousand five hundred with the buyer's premium that's about thirteen thousand seven fifty, something like that that's going to be a pretty good sale for a, a bgs9 because i think that card's actually started to dip a little bit um this will be a big sale for this card if it keeps going especially because there's a million of them seven i know there there are a lot of these like i'm not going to sit here i love the card i'm not going to sit here and argue with you there's 1735 bgs nines and if we look at the last two weeks nope that's not gonna work let's look at the last month you know nine of them have sold in the last month josh so wow. 13 five was the last one 14 four it's gotten as high as 16 but this is the one i was talking about this was a PWCC with a sticker that sold for 11.75, 11,750. Wow. This one's already at, you know, what is that? 13,750, yeah. something like that. So this one's looking to make a run. And, and you and I both know enough about this card to know this. 9.5 centering matters. You yeah. know, um, yeah. I mean, that matters. I mean, that that is the most important subgrade on the Jordan cards. And not just what the subgrade says, but just looking at the card, just the eye appeal of the card. Yeah, that's a pretty good centered BGS nine copy. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good centering. Would you think? I think BGS. First of all, that's a great looking card. Uh, second of all, I think BGS nine is the best value in the hobby for cards. Uh, I think it's the if you 
any card in the BGS nine I think is a steal, especially in the nineties. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And then LeBron cards I think are the best buy. Probably should probably should edit, edit this out later. But uh, LeBron <laughs> cards are the best uh, buy in the hobby. I think it's down. so. You are telling everybody watching this video to go buy LeBron BGS nines. Yeah. Did I read? I mean, did I hear that? Yeah, I have uh, fifteen of them. That's why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 15,000. <000. laughs> That's great. I mean, some of these are cool. That curry card, I never understood. Which one? This one? Yeah. It just, I don't know. It never did anything for me. It was just like. Do you grade, do you, do you grade SGC? I do for vintage. Vintage. That's right, because you're a huge vintage. And if, if you were ranking vintage as far as uh, preferred slabs, educate me here, because I, I have vintage cards. But uh -huh. I, as you know, I only collect PSA and BGS. Yeah. I don't have a huge vintage collection, but if you're ranking the, the priority as far as most sought after slabs for vintage, is it PSA, yeah. then SGC, then BVG? Yeah. In that order? Like, no, there's yeah. no argument that SGC trumps PSA. No, no, it's P no, no, it's PSA, then, then, then SGC. Got it. Always. And, and, then, then, and, and then a distant third, BVG. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're very distant third. I know because a lot of vintage guys will only buy SGC for vintage cards like they wouldn't even look at psa because there's a weird like dichotomy there among the older old heads with vintage yeah. like, hate psa love sgc for god knows why but yeah do I you think, like the look of the sgc slabs i do i think i think for some cards it looks really sharp like that looks really sharp in that like, the white with the black i think looks really cool yeah i think it's neat. is it am i always i'm always trying to read these do they have it Opposite, like you see how BGS is 9.5 grade, 10 auto. Yep. Does SGC grade it backwards? Is it 9 yep. grade, 10 auto? 10 auto, yeah. Yeah. It looks like it's backwards. I guess That's they're confusing. just trying to be different. I, know. Um, I tell you what, I did a show the other day with a local collector here in town, and they had, uh, and I'm just scrolling through stuff so people can look at it. Um, I did a show here the other day in town with uh, Anthony Renata, who owns uh, Cards and Culture. It's a local card shop here. Really cool shop. It's got like sneakers and artwork, and, you know, there's kind of like, a bunch of ultra modern collectible stuff, a bunch of alternative asset stuff, but primarily it's a card shop. And we did a show and he, um, he had some of the fresh brand new CSG slabs. I don't, I don't personally jump on the CSG, you know, bandwagon. Like I said, I'm PSA or BGS primarily, uh, for ultra modern, I'm almost exclusively PSA, but, uh, mm -hmm. I held those CSG slabs in my hand for the first time. And these are the brand new ones that just came out maybe like sure. 30, 30 days ago. Josh, they are gorgeous. They are unbelievably gorgeous in hand. They redid the label. Remember the green label? There was a bunch of blank space that was not used. It looked terrible, I thought. I thought it looked really cheap. Sure. Um, but the new ones look fantastic. I held one in my hand. It almost looked like the slab itself was a refractor. I mean, it was glistening. It was it was beautiful. It was it was not a high-end card, but the slab itself I could appreciate. Um, and then, you know, you heard about the, the PWCC relationship now with CSG. Did you hear about yeah, that? The one-stop shop thing. Yeah. I don't know what to think about that. What are your, what are your, how much do you know about that? What are your thoughts on that? I like CSG. Uh, they did a lot with comics for a very long time. Um, I never really got really into comics. I always thought they were cool, but I don't know much, enough about it to like buy like a Batman comic or something. Yeah. But, uh, I, I bought a couple of their cards and. The holders are sharp. I think they're nice. They're hard graders. I sent a bunch of stuff in like early nineties. That's what um, I've heard. Basketball and, and hockey, and I got hammered. But they're uh, they're cool. Why did you send it? Why did you send those cards to CSG? I had during like, the shutdown. Yeah. Oh yeah. PSA was shut down, and they had a yeah. deal it was like eight bucks a card. Yeah. So it was fine, and I sent everything to Wharf Wharf Sports Cards and sold it all off. But it was. Um, yeah, I mean they were really hard graders. I thought most I maybe my eyes are bad, but it was like the, the, the whole the slabs are real nice. Yeah, um, I've um I've heard a lot of you guys, you know, in our group chat and and just otherwise in the hobby, a lot of people speak real highly of Wharf as a consignment place. Is that a place that you you've dealt with before? You trust them? They do a good job. Yeah, they're closing. He's closing down though. Like this I week. I thought I saw that. That's what I thought I saw. Like he put like a almost like a farewell and kind of an yeah. explanation post. What's yeah. he? Is he doing something different in the hobby, or was it just taking too much time? Too much time. He said it was like tons of time, like eighty hours a week. You know. Yikes. I would do. I would do cards eighty hours a week. You know. I, <laughs> I, I do. do. I do do cards eighty hours a week. I work like <laughs> a lot. Sometimes eighty hours a week. I'd rather if I was doing, I'd rather do it with cards than you know <laughs> yeah, some right. of the stuff that I deal with during the day. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Right. Um, well, there's always room for you here at my title company as a transactional lawyer. If you ever want to stop being a real lawyer and you just want to come over here and be like me, you're welcome to your hair. Will grow, all your hair will grow back. It will. 
<laughs> I'll talk to you. I got a, I got a, a month long trial in August. Uh, I probably will want to do that after that's over. So, yeah, I don't know how y'all do that. And by the way, it's going to settle anyway. It always does. At least oh, that's what I was taught. That's what I was taught to say. It's going to settle. Don't worry about it. You this don't need to prepare. Josh, this you don't need to prepare for that. It's going to settle. Oh my God. We have, I have seven terabytes of information here. here here's one right here. Here, let me show you. I got, I got seven of these things. I don't even know what a terabyte is. You pretended like you didn't know anything about technology. You just you just used the word terabyte on my show. Because they said buy a ter, they said buy a terabyte hard drive. So I said okay. So I I bought one. I had to buy seven of them. Then they said the government's like, oh, we want them back when the case is over. I'm like, you can pay me for them, like a hundred bucks a piece. Sorry, <laughs> let's go back to cards. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's get out. Of, we're not going to sit here like like a bunch of law school nerds and talk about right. law school law school exams and the, and the answers to the question. You told me you had no children. Are those children that you've trapped in your house? I have, I have two children. Is that oh, okay? <laughs> they should be in bed, but they're not. It's okay. You know what? The older one, older one wants to play NBA Two K. So we're gonna play after this is over. Yeah, I think he can. If I can read his lips, he's like, "Is that Cajun cardboard? Is that the guy that we've been hearing about? The famous, the famous guy with the T-shirts? Is that him?" It's Cajun cardboard. <laughs> That's the younger one on the. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so he's he beats my beats me really bad in uh, in NBA Two K. I finally, I finally was winning at the halftime today in the afternoon, and somehow. The game got disconnected, so you, you put somehow two and two together. we don't know. Somehow the controller was smashed into a thousand pieces. Right, right, <laughs> right. And then the game's missing, so we don't know what happened to it. But he's That's a big, right. he's a big Steph Curry fan. He wants a Steph, what? he wants a Steph Curry rookie card. So yeah. I'm like, no thanks. Well, there's one right there from SGC. Look, we can scroll up. How Let's much see. does he need? Here's one right here. He only needs nine grand. Well, eleven with the BP. That's not bad. <laughs> so let's let's go check out just a couple of rows of golden. I don't okay. know a dang thing about golden site. How do I find it? Where do I go right now? Or right, well, let me share my screen with you. Hang golden. on. Golden.com. So I'm right here. So go to buy. Buy. And then this is the current auction. They're in extended bidding right now. Let's go to basketball. Oh look, yes. it's the Jordan PSA nine. <laughs> I mean that yeah that that's an awesome card that Jordan uh, O one upper deck. I think I, I think I know a seven footer who's probably buying that. So I'm gonna stay off. He's not this. seven feet, dude. You cannot round up. He's not seven feet. We're not gonna do that. If he's I'm gonna sorry. if he's watching, he's gonna laugh his ass off. <laughs> I'm so five, six. Everybody's seven feet. Yeah, yeah. The the rumor is your boy Kevin Garnett, right? We were talking about KG earlier today. Yeah. The rumor is he's seven feet tall, but he refused to be known as a seven footer. So he told everybody he was six eleven. But he's yep. he's really like seven one. He's got a huge story. He's huge. Yeah. I'll Did never forget that story. He always wanted to be listed as 6'11 because he refused to be identified as a seven footer. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. is this all about right here? Number three out of seven, hand serial number. Ooh, that autograph is rough. It's a buyback, I think. Yeah. Ultimate collection buyback. Wow. I think those are cool. Some people don't yeah. like buybacks. I've seen a couple in the past few years. There was a hot, a hot shots buyback uh, a few years ago that sold for like big Does money. Does this bother you? I'm 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 not an autograph collector. I own two Jordan autographs to my name. Two. That's it. Does this right. bother you? Does that does that is that a low quality autograph or is this yeah. just me? Yeah, it got an authentic grade too, right? Yeah, no, yeah. that bothers me. If I'm gonna buy yeah. an auto, I want it to be like very clean, especially MJ. That's probably a very glossy card anyway, right? So and that might be why it's why it's kind of like uh scatter shot like that, why it's not a crisp blue, you know. Uh, um it's a glossy it, it seems card. Like, yeah, let me go back. This doesn't seem like um, – I mean, normally aren't there a lot bigger cards in Golden Auction? Like, aren't there normally huge, like, $500,000, $600,000, $700,000 cards? It seems kind of low. This is, I think, his monthly one. This isn't one of his premier auctions. Although – Got it. He's got, got it. some big stuff ended last night. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, you know what I did? I didn't sort it by highest price. There we go. There, well, there's that guy. What's it's, this all about? That's a good looking card. That's a very nice card. Yeah, that's. I was, I'm, I'm way out of that one. Uh, <laughs> is it is it safe to say that if you had to choose between this Jordan autograph hand serial numbered to fifty autograph card and the John Morant next to it, you would probably choose the Jordan. Probably, I think that's a very safe bet. Or, or the guy whose mom signed the other card. <laughs> Miss Miss Doncic. <laughs> Mrs. Doncic. Yeah. Uh, that's and, awesome. The high voltage awesome. is a great card. That always maintains its value. Tell me about this. Tell me, do you do you have any uh, Jordan Star cards? 
No, uh, I passed on a 7.5 uh, 101 in uh, 2018, uh, and I uh, wish I didn't. Yeah. So it's I, I, when I got back into the game and I started collecting Jordans, Josh, probably a little like right at two years ago, like just before the pandemic, I started collecting Jordans. The way I started is I just started buying his 86 Fleer at NOS. I mean, I just, Josh, I stocked up. At one point, I had 50. Uh, 86 Fleer between his base and his um, and his sticker, all PSA BGS graded. Mm-hmm. I just kept hitting the buy button. I, I was getting them all over the place. I was buying in. I was, you know, treating it purely as an investment. I was like, what is the safest play in the hobby? At that point, I was like, Jordan's the safest play. What's the safest Jordan card? I didn't know anything about 90s Jordans. I didn't know anything about refractors, parallels, inserts, mm-hmm. nothing, knew nothing. And uh, and I was like, well, is 86, you know, at that point, I was always of the opinion that the rookie card's the best card. The rookie yeah. card is always the safest, best card of a player. And that's clearly, obviously, after educating myself with tens of thousands of hours in this hobby, I know mm-hmm. that is not always the case, right? With the PMGs right. and the central credentials and then, the, you know, the buybacks. There's all kinds of – there's a million cards better than a PSA 10 Jordan 86 Fleer. I will be the first one to admit that. But at that time, I didn't know. So I was just buying Jordan rookie mm-hmm. cards as an investment. And then – I watched a video, and I've talked about this on podcasts before. I started watching uh, House of Jordans, right, with Chris yeah. and 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 um, Christina, and uh, I, I think the other guy's name was Brian back then. Was his name Brian? Yeah, they dumped him. He was like, uh, he's like the other guy on American. Uh, what's that show? Uh, yeah, he they they dumped him. Like I'm going to dump you after this episode. Uh, and then and then uh, then I watched Cardboard Chronicles. And then, um, and then I watched this dude. There was this weird. He had a very strange way of talking, but I don't know if you've ever seen this. He was his name was PSA Collector. Have yes. you ever seen him? Yes. He loved to say the, the phrase "low hanging fruit." Yeah. And I don't know why. I'll, it was very endearing to me. I was like, well, this guy really loves Jordan. He was he he had a very awkward manner of speaking, and he didn't strike me like as somebody who would be a you know an avid Jordan collector. But he would do these videos of highest Jordan sales. And I started seeing these like just incredibly mesmerizing, beautiful Jordan mm-hmm. inserts and parallels. And at that point, I was hooked. I'll never forget it. I watched that video for the first time. I was riding my bike. It was during the shutdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, even in Baton Rouge, we y'all shut down for like a decade. We shut down down here for like 10 I minutes, miss, right? I miss it. But, um, yeah. I was on my bike watching it on my screen. I almost crashed my bike. I was like, this is too good. I literally stopped my bike sat on the bench and held the phone up because I can't see a damn thing, held the phone up right here. And I was like, I'm going to make a list. And that next day I went to my office. I started making a list. Here's the Jordans I'm going after. And I started selling my 86 Fleer Jordans and taking that money and reinvesting it into the inserts and parallels that that you and I obviously have fallen in love with from the Mm -hmm. nineties. And, uh, and the rest is history. And that's how I became a Jordan collector. And, uh, and now I have 1% of, uh, of, of one percent of one percent of one percent of the Jordans that I want. So, um, but that's it. Well, look, we're right at fifty-two minutes, so it's probably time to kill it. We are rambling, and I've got you know the golden auction on my screen, but we're not even really talking about it. But it is cool that four of the yeah. top six cards uh, are Jordans, and here's sure. another one right here. Um, but uh, but this was fun, cool. Next time we'll be uh, a little more uh, organized. Uh, for those of you watching, I appreciate y'all watching, and and thanks for welcoming Josh on the channel. Uh, this will definitely not be the last time. Look for us next Sunday. Josh, we tried to come up with a name for the show, um, and, and we couldn't do it. So maybe somebody can comment with a good name for the show. Uh, maybe your wife or my wife or, or your two kids who very rudely barged in on our uh, <laughs> video come up with a name. You know, just make sure it has nothing to do with Steph Curry, uh, you know, or I'll say the, he who shall not be named. Right. right the other guy. Yeah. Right. The, uh, AO, the AO Power no, Hour. There you go. The what? The AO Power Hour. I <laughs> knew you were going to say something about AO. <laughs> the AO Power Hour. That, that might be what it needs to be. That might be what it needs to be. Uh, but anyway, uh, thanks for joining. Thank uh, for anything else you want to say? Anything? You want to share anything? You trying to sell any cards? You got any cards for sale you're trying to move? I've got like 11 subscribers, so there's probably 11 people going to watch this video. You might be able to sell one. Nah, I'm good. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> I'll just post it on the – I'll post it on the uh, – I'll post it on the, on the – uh, Instagram. On Instagram. I just said um, Instagram. I'm officially an old person. And look, look, let me remind everybody, here's Josh's Instagram page. You've got it on your screen. It's Midwest Vintage Cards. Even if you're, you're not on Instagram, go get on and, yeah. uh, and and go find me and follow me. I'll follow you back. Just shoot me a message and go follow Josh. He'll follow you back. 
Um, as you can see, he follows pretty much everybody in the hobby right there. I'll highlight that for you. He, he's followed everybody. He doesn't follow me, believe it or not, but he follows everybody else apparently. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, uh, but y'all go check out Josh. He's uh, at, at Midwest Vintage Cards on Instagram, and I'm obviously at Cajun underscore Cardboard um, on Instagram. So uh, anyway, that's it. It's about – we're a little bit shy of an hour, which is pretty good for me because I can ramble forever. Um, Josh, thanks for joining us. Um, Thank and, you. And uh, we're going to chat again next Sunday evening, I hope. I had a lot of fun. Sounds good. All right, buddy. Thanks. See you. Take care. All right, guys. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate you uh, spending some time with me. Uh, it's a late Sunday evening for me. I'm going to be up early tomorrow morning to do our PWCC recap of uh, of that auction number 15 that we took a little brief glance at. Again, these Sunday chats are just going to be me and Josh getting on here and just kind of BS and, and just chatting. There's not really a script or anything like that. We're just going to start pulling up some stuff on the screen and just chatting about it. So if you've got some time to kill or you want to jump on the treadmill or on the bike and get some exercise in, uh, hopefully we can help you get through it and get from the uh, from the start line to the finish line. Thank you guys for watching. Keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby and peace, fellas.